our daily program on Nifty Bank Nifty and UJ. So if you're new to this, what is Kyalagra Market? Kyalagra Market is based on a very simple philosophy, which is um, if you can't beat them, uh, it's better to join them. Who are they? They are obviously the big boys who move the market. So our idea is simple, right? Every year, I know hundreds and thousands and lakhs of people open the balance sheet. They try to study the economy. They spend infinite hours watching TV channels and reading websites, figuring that yar, kuch stock market pad loga. people, what they don't realize is that, look, this is a losing game, right? There are people in Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch and Millennium and Tower and Graviton and God knows which other places who know all of this, who employ hyper smart people whose only job is to find something which others haven't found, right? And they are aided by computers. They are aided by statistical models. They are aided by insider information for all you know. Because, okay, come on. Uh, <laughs> how many Goldman Sachs chairmen have been the head of Federal Reserve in the US, right? So are you going to tell me that if, uh, uh, you know, never, never mind, I'm never going to complete that sentence. So we realize that there's no point in figuring out the stock market by starting from zero. The only thing you can do is figure out what the big guys are doing, right? If you can figure out what the big guys are doing, then without being too smart about it, we can just replicate their trades, copy their trades. And, you know, that's, I mean, if you, if you ask me, that's the only way to do anything in the market, right? So there's no point, absolutely no point in trying to hope that there's something with, which is hidden there in a macroeconomic textbook, which we will read. Yar Guntur Giri, yar, yar, why did you ask that question? You're asking how much debt ceiling in US will impact on tomorrow weekly. Yar, why, do, why should we know, right? Because see, whoever is running the US show has told the inf in in investment banks and the hedge funds and everybody else who matters what will happen tomorrow. What they are doing is already reflected in today's data. So instead of trying to figure out what debt ceiling means, we just look at data, right? We don't even have to have the effort of figuring out learning what that is, right? So on that prelude of two and a half minutes prelude, let's get started with Kyalagram market, right? So, so let's look at what we said yesterday, right? So we said, um, if 18300 holds, we'll see bullishness, else it can go down. So it went down today in a big way. And we said, if supports hold, then we will trade for the up upward breakout. But otherwise, it's a wait and watch because market was looking bearish yesterday. Because of FII data being overwhelmingly negative, the channel support of one hour time frame was getting tested. 18400 pay, there was a massive resistance. Uh, FII data was negative on all counts in the sense that uh, option data, futures data both were negative. And we kind of figured maybe it's a good idea not to do anything today, right? And it is in a way true, right? Because even if you short um, today, right? Uh, you saw the buying at the bottom. So maybe you shorted at 18, 315, but it's not like you captured a big move, right? Because market bounced from the bottom very squarely. Uh, maybe if you sold higher calls, it was a good idea, but that's about it, right? So let's look at what's happening today. So one thing is yesterday, we were drawing that early support trend line, right? Sorry, uh, early, uh, early channel. And this is the channel, right? The channel inside, which I'm showing. And let me magnify that to an hourly time frame. So this has broken, right? There's no question about it. This trend line, which we were drawing yesterday, this has been very, very categorically broken. Right? So this is negative. This has been broken and it went down. But somehow there was some kind of buying here and it's going back to the 100 hourly moving average. The second thing you can see is on a daily time frame, let me go to daily time frame. Let me delete this. And See, this is the point. There's a lot of buying which emerged at this level, right? You can see that there's a rejection at this point. Bulls push the market up here and it closed here. Now the catch is this is very close to the blue line which you are seeing here. 
there's a trend line we drew a support line we drew connecting ukraine covid and all those loops now the thing is this blue trend line could be thoda idhar udhar 50 point idhar udhar and you know uh, we might be still in the support so we don't know if it's in the support or not because these trend lines are very tricky i mean you can't perfectly connect all the because there's some subjectivity here right so i'm not sure if this trend line is broken or not if it's not broken then I, so if you're not certain wait for it right so for me it's a wait and watch because i'm not fully convinced this trend line is broken right so nifty is a wait and watch for me bank nifty also showed support from today's lows uh, good volumes dollar yesterday we were saying right it's probably going to consolidate and i think there is a possibility that it can go all the way to 8270 right 30 more points by say upside left at least right now dollar going up cannot be good for the markets but you know i'm just going to put it there 30 paisa more i'm expecting can happen so that is the charts right uh, now let me quickly see the comments if i is or yep 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 okay so now let's look at something else which is uh, open interest charts so if you look at open interest charts uh see today was a bearish day no doubt but here's the interesting thing 18200 has not seen much of unwind 18150 and 100 even so addition 18300 18200 and 18400 has massive uh, fall addition right this is mega bearish you know this portion is very bearish uh you know and the fact that there is unwinding at 300 200 is also very bearish however there is the bearishness has not transmitted to this side of option j right not much this is point number 1 right obviously because uh, if you look at the last 3 hours action uh there was a lot of call unwinding right so look at the last 2 hours mega call unwinding right but that's because of the uh you know obviously because of the last 3 uh, hour uh buying which uh, came in the second half of the day now overall option chain 18200 looks like a kind of a resistance but you have to understand that 18300 and 400 this is the real resistance right if you ask me can it go to 18300 possibly will it cross 18300 highly unlikely so i'm guessing expiry tomorrow can be anywhere in this territory right basically 18 100 to 18300 territory i don't think 18300 is getting taken out tomorrow because there's too much of a you know uh, there's way too much of uh, call writing there highly unlikely we'll see an 8300 plus expiry so maybe if you ask me this is the range 18100 to or this is the range 18100 to 18300 is likely where we'll see an expiry tomorrow i don't think 18100 is getting getting taken out that easily uh, i mean that's a bold prediction because you know uh, market looks bearish for sure uh, on all counts uh, but yeah i'm going to put uh, maybe you can even be safer and say 8300 for sure right but the downside can stretch up to 18000 but this is an absolute stretch this is a stretch this this part is a stretch this is the most likely expiry 300 and 100 right pcr is 0.7 that is neutral to bearish but if you look around the atm it is definitely bearish right so chart is wait and watch option chain is slightly bearish fi data is absolutely bearish so they sold 65000 crore 65000 quantity uh calls that is bearish and they sold 43000 quantity which is bearish so net net if i add calls and puts which is not correct but i can roughly say 1 lakh quantity of options have been traded in the side side of bearishness which is phenomenally high right it is not bearish it is very very bearish right fi is super bearish this time and they are also bearish on fi uh, index futures uh, stock is 150 crore so this does not really count don't don't pay attention to that but index futures oi is still low 
because in march and all we had like 200k negative in march compared to that this is a very puny 7k negative right 6k negative so it's not as bearish as what we saw in march but it's not positive either right so net net see i am still in a wait and watch mode i don't want to say that chalo let's also short because fi is shorting maybe if i shorted for these 300 points so if nifty closes so here's the important part right oh <coughs> sorry <coughs> so if you look at uh, the weekly chart of uh, nifty now it looks like this right this looks like a um, harami information right what's a harami if a green candle Oh, there's a lag. Okay. So if there's a green candle and then there's a red candle, I say. This is what you call a harabi. This is usually a reversal pattern and after that market can go up, I say. But if Nifty closes above, let's say, 18300 kind of a level, right? Then the candle will look like this. So if Nifty closes below uh, 18200, then it will be a red harami. But if Nifty closes above 18300, the candle will look like this. So basically it all boils down to what the weekly candle is going to look like. If you ask me where is my bias, my bias is honestly bearish why because this candle as of now is a reversal candle to the early chart so let me write out my reasons right uh, how do i write it out yes wait. so overall right net net i feel bearish Set if I have bought more calls, no more, right? Sanjeev, I don't know what you're talking about. So, here's the thing number one, weekly candle. so far is negative right this can change of course if nifty goes above if it's above 18300 it's a different story my second reason is early candle broken now this is tricky because early is of course a, a smaller time frame my third reason why I think there can be bearishness coming is if you look at daily candle of Nifty. This is a bearish piercing and this is a confirmation. So daily may bearish piercing confirmed. So these three and FIDA data of course. I have four reasons why I am negative on Nifty. In fact, my only reason why I am positive on Nifty is, why am I positive? One, uh, the long term trend is still positive. Bigger time frame is positive. And uh, COVID trend line probably, I mean, basically support trend line, right? I don't want to call it COVID trend line. It's a name which I am exclusively giving. It's not kind of nice. So basically two reasons why I think this is negative. 
uh, positive, sorry, and four reasons I think it is uh, negative. Uh, ideally, actually, I have a conflict, but uh, tough call, right? Uh, I, I, I mean, personally, I have some long position, so I'll also show my what I have done. So day before yesterday, I cashed out a lot of calls because the top of the channel was approaching. But here's my uh, scene right now, right? Uh, see, I have, it's all put spreads. This is the 29th June, 18,100 uh, put spread. There's a 25th May, uh, two put spread. One is 18,350 put uh, and the other is 18,250 put. Uh, so basically sorry 8482 so basically my guess is that 25th may expiry might happen about 8250 but the good thing is that if everything goes wrong i still my max loss is capped at around 1.2 l like if everything goes wrong right and uh on expiry day uh, of may if things go wrong i probably will pick up a 70k loss right uh i am medium term bullish because i'm not still reaching the point where I'm sure that, okay, this looks bad. If uh, on Friday, there is a clear cut Harami formation. And if it is indicating a reversal, I'll get out. Of course, probably when I get out, I'll have like a slightly bigger loss. But today I'm not getting enough conviction to basically uh, get out of these put spreads, right? I could be wrong here, or maybe I'm just stuck to a position. Basically I was trend following and I started buying it somewhere around day 6800, 900. And even at this point, I'm not sure if it's a dip to buy or if it's a reversal. The problem with uh, calling a reversal, right? Reversals happen rarely. And I don't want to call a reversal early and get out of a winning position, which is why I booked to most of my profits. Some positions are remaining. Maybe if there's a, a continuation signal, I might again get inside the trade, right? Uh, Uh, but anyway, that is that. So this is our, uh, this is our, uh, uh, analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and as usual, please take care and keep your captain safe. Bye.